All right, everyone, welcome to a new segment. In here, we're gonna look at a very special type of equation. It's called the Cauchy Euler equation. Okay, you may remember this person from fluid mechanics as well, just like the Bernoulli's. So, again, same conversation about pe people being in fluid mechanics being also have significance of uh, mathematics or vice versa, more specifically. Okay, but, anyways, let's write the, uh, the special and let's talk about what is so special right so note here right here look what i have this is the first time i've had this type of a form okay dx and minus one and i have here i have all the way to a1 x dy dx a0 y will be equal to g of x okay first of all the question is this linear or not yes it is linear right Okay, so what is so special is I would like you to actually look at this. Do you see? To the one, right? Um, and zero, right? Um, they are the same. Okay, that is the special type of thing about the Cauchy Euler equation. But I want to also write here that a n, a n minus one, all the way, you know, interest, etc., are all constants. Okay, they are not functions, constants. One, two, five, ten minus. 7 okay and if I want to write this in the second order a x square d square y dx square plus bx dy dx plus c y is equal to 0 right nice and easy right I'm just having a second order now so what is so special I said that this is a very special one right so you may not appreciate it just yet but here's what's going on this is one of the few um, variable coefficient equations that can always be integrated okay um, and also people also call this uh, rightfully that equidimensional dimensional equation well due to this you know one right and zero yeah um, for, for this reason okay um, and you know so basically the power and derivatives are the same order or the dimension the solution to the Euler type equation I'm gonna call this Cauchy Euler but I'm gonna call this Euler because of I'm more familiar with that from my uh, fluid mechanics uh, background but I the, the solution will be in this manner okay um, and this M is the question mark that we are trying to establish okay um, I want to make sure that we differentiate this what we covered during our conversations with the undetermined coefficients there we call this e to the power of n this is x to the power of m just want to highlight this is a little bit different okay let me give you additional information so you appreciate what kind of a advantage i obtained by having this and well second order is kind of easy right why don't we make ourselves uh, a bit harder right so that we can analyze a third order differential equation that can be represented in this manner over here plus cx dy dx plus d okay this is kind of interesting you know so this is not the you know uh, this d is not the derivative this is just a kind of abcd okay is equal to zero i gave you a homogeneous equation but it doesn't have to be okay in this particular case I'm giving you a homogeneous you don't have to so what I will do is I will simply go at let's use the same color here here so I'm just gonna simply do what I just said right so if I have dy dx then it's gonna be what m x to the m d square y dx square is equal to m m minus 1 x m minus 2 right so far so good and I need to do one more and that will be d cube by dx cube is equal to m m minus 1 m minus 2 you see where I'm going with this m minus 3 right so if I go ahead and simply just plug this there this here this here let's see what we'll, uh, we will end up with okay so a x cube m minus 2 m minus 1 and x m minus 3 I'm just simply you see let me go up so I'm simply going taking this and plugging it over here remember ax cube was already here I just simply put that 
not gonna show the rest, but you get the point. Bx squared m minus 1, m x m minus 2, plus c x m x m minus 1, plus d, again, d is a constant, x to the power of m will be equal to 0. Okay, I'll tell you something that is really nice. This is why this whole thing works. Look here, minus 3, 3. So what happens to these if I multiply? What about this? What about this? You see why I can directly integrate this equation? So as I form this this way, I will actually go ahead and get myself. So those will cancel. And I will get myself a m minus 2, m minus 1, m, x, m, plus b, m minus 1, m, x, m, plus c, m, x, m, plus d, x, m is equal to 0. So I can take this in uh, the parentheses of x to the power of uh, m plus b m minus 1 m plus c m plus d x to the m is equal to 0. So my goal is to find m, remember that, right? So now I get myself uh, an interesting situation where I either this is 0 or this is 0 or both of them are 0. So can I have x to the power of m 0? So for any value that I put... Um, um, not necessarily, right? I cannot get myself a nice root that I can... So that means that this is 0, this bracket is 0. So that is a nice uh, third order equation, right? Uh, I don't want to rewrite this, but you see this is supposed to be 0. How many roots will I obtain? Three of them, right? Because it's a third order equation. So then I'm going to get myself three roots, right? And these three roots will be, let's do this way, m1 m2 and m3 so i will have three of them and that's my goal okay so do you remember that when we discussed the undetermined coefficients we had different cases right for case one case two case three so this will look like that okay so it's quite similar to this the approach wise but uh, you know just hang on i will also highlight the differences from that okay the first thing I want to uh, say that, well, let's say that m1 is not equal to m2, is not equal to m3, and all real. So that was case 1, if you remember from that uh, segment. So I have the same, so now my solution will be actually, you know, c1, x to the m1, plus c2, x to the m2, plus c3, x to the m3 c1, c2, c3 are constants and this is a basically a homogeneous equation so it's a complementary solution as I don't have a particular solution it's also the solution okay so now this is getting a little bit more uh, you know I just want to also highlight that this was e to the right e to the e to the remember that so it's kind of different a bit so this was case one let's look at case two okay um, I'll actually go out and generalize this a bit and let's say that if I have uh, or you know m n is a root right and is repeated let's say it's repeated s times so i'm not saying that you know like i only have a repeated root i may have a non repeated root as well i don't want to just exclude myself from that okay so what will happen is then i will have this type of solution then i will get myself you know this y will be equal to c1 x to the power of m n plus c2 x to the power of m n right now remember in the uh, undetermined coefficients we were having e to the power and we were multiplying this by x if this was repeated three times then i have x squared right so now please note you are writing your ln of x okay it's different it's not the same so the reason why I want to show not only two times or three times is, you'll see in a minute, c3 times x to the mn is st still the same root, ln x square. Okay, so this is something to note. Um, I want to highlight that. If it is three times, um, if it is s times, then I'm going to get, well, you can see where I'm going with it. It's going to be cs, x to the m s, ln x, s minus 1, right? You know, if you look here, for instance, uh, you know, the third one. But I have two here, so s minus one. Okay, so this is what's gonna have, and you're gonna add, you're gonna, you can add yourself another root. Let's say that the inner root is real, then you just simply add that, 
and if this another root is repeated twice, then you're going to have C1x and let's call this t, then you're going to have C2x and t times ln of x, right? You may even re review the undetermined coefficient sections just to practice a little bit, okay? But I want to, um, you know, as you know, in this uh, course, we focus on second order a lot as well. So let me write it for you. Um, if this is the case, I'm going to have C C1 x m1 plus C2 x m1 ln x, right? m1 is repeated twice, so double root. So case 3 now, let's look at case 3. And remember, this was a uh, complex, right? It's the same thing over here. I'm going to get complex conjugate roots. Just very, very similar to the undetermined coefficient section. Let's say that m1 is equal to alpha plus i beta, and m2 is equal to alpha minus i beta. Remember? Same as before. It's a complex solution, no question about that, right? So this time around, uh, what I will have is, I will have c1 x to the power of alpha plus i beta. Nothing different in here. We did the similar thing, with, except it was on x, it was e to the power. c2 x to the power of alpha minus i beta. If you remember, um, we have gone through a few steps over here, and we get ourselves a complex uh, y that looks like this, x to the power of alpha. Okay, c1 cosine of beta ln x plus c2 sine of beta ln x. Okay, so this ln x is kind of not nice, right? I, I get that, but it is what it is. This is something that I would like you to be, um, you know, cognizant of. So that's kind of um, it from the main conversation point of view. Um, obviously, what I will do is I'll solve a couple questions to this, this Cauchy earlier equation and show you how this is solved, um, you know, as well. I'll be right back with some more examples. Thank you for watching this particular segment.